Hello, Miss Roxanne here, your paraeducator for Echo Glen. Today we're going to do English, but before we get started, I have the expectations all typed up, ready to share with you so that you know how our lesson's going to go today. So I'll bring that up for you. So first thing is remove all the distractions, okay? Get yourself ready to learn. Have a piece of paper and a pencil handy. Please put your full name, no nicknames, because the teacher may not know it, the date today, and your cottage. Then I'd like you to have your ears open, your eyes open, to listen and to see the video I'm going to show, and to do when I review the quiz. At the end of the, of the quiz, we're going to jump right into the worksheet. You'll copy down the information off the worksheet and complete it for grading. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right to the movie. And here we go. Hi there, and welcome to the special Hollywood Awards edition of Inside Access. Last night's ceremony was the shortest ever, clocking in at just over seven hours. Come on, Moby, we don't have time for a letter now. Wouldn't people rather hear about red carpet do's and don'ts? Uh, all right. Dear Tim and Moby, my dad says you can't trust everything you see on the news because they mix facts and opinions together. What does that mean? Sincerely, Lily. Thanks for writing in, Lily. A fact is a statement that can be proven true or false. For example, birds have wings is a fact. We can prove that birds are defined in part by their wings. Humans have wings is also a statement of fact, but we can prove that it's false. An opinion is a statement that can't be proven true or false. It's based on the speaker's beliefs. Canaries make better pets than ostriches is an opinion. You can't prove that canaries make better pets than ostriches. Some people might really like ostriches. They'd say that canaries make boring pets while ostriches are exciting. Neither opinion is right, since opinions are based on things like feelings and judgments. Well, opinions can be backed up by facts. If I were arguing for canaries, I could point out that they're small and they don't eat a lot. Plus, they make less noise than many other birds. These are all facts that can be proven true with a little research. A little canary stance is now backed up by evidence. It's still an opinion, but it's an informed one. Now, can I get back to hosting Inside Access? If I don't, our viewers are never going to know who's hot and who's not. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to give the awards wrap up. Every time I state a fact, flash the word fact at the bottom of the screen. Every time I voice an opinion, flash the word opinion, okay? Well, folks, the annual Hollywood Awards aired live last night. <laughs> This year's ceremony was the most glamorous, exciting night ever. Kate Bliss won top actress for a stunning turn as a sea captain coping with dandruff. But she clearly gave the best performance and deserved to win. Oh, oh come on, Moby. Words like best, worst, always, and never should be big red flags that you're hearing an opinion. I said Kate Bliss gave the best performance and deserved to win the award. Those statements can't be proven true or false. On the other hand, nobody can argue that the ceremony took place last night. Get it? Oh, I see what you mean. I said Kate Bliss won an award for her stunning performance. It's a fact that she won the award, but whether or not her performance was stunning is an opinion. That's an example of bias, slanting the facts to reflect an opinion. It's something you have to watch out for in all forms of media, not just the Hollywood news. Well, imagine you had to write an article about your school's new dress code. If you opposed the policy, you might say that it attacks blue jeans and violates students' right to wear what they choose. You could also include interviews with kids who disagree with the policy. But if you supported it, you might say the policy encourages students to dress neatly and creates an orderly environment. 
You might leave out those interviews with angry kids. If you had a chat with the school principal, both articles would be factual, but still reflect the writer's opinion. Well, it's not always done on purpose. In fact, it's sometimes unavoidable. A textbook can show bias simply by focusing on some topics and not others. Even a scientific study can subtly reflect the author's opinions. Okay, now back to the awards. Oh, come on, we never got to discuss best picture. Who's wearing what or... Ah, oh, forget it. All right, so let's just go right into the quiz. Okay, fact or opinion? What book contains only facts and no opinions? Is it A, a collection of short fiction, a telephone directory, B, a history textbook, C, or a book about dog grooming, D? Hmm, I think it's a telephone directory because short fiction, that can be all opinions. A history te textbook can be facts and opinions together. And a book about dog grooming is definitely uh, facts and opinions. So let's do a telephone directory. Right on. So two, what is a synonym for informed opinion? Is it A, political opinion? Is it B, correct opinion? Is it C, strong opinion? Or D, knowledgeable opinion? Well, I think if somebody's informed, they've got some prior knowledge. So let's pick that one. Here you go. <coughs> Pardon me. David Wright is the best hitter on the Mets. Last year, he led the team in batting average, runs scored, and runs batted. In, is this an A, an informed opinion? B, an uninformed opinion? C, an unbiased fact? Or an unbiased opinion for D? What do you think? Well, it sounds to me like it's, it's an informed opinion. Yeah, cool. Four, which of the following is a fact? Fred and George are much funnier than Percy. J.K. Rollins is the luckiest person in the world. Daniel Radcliffe once guest starred on The Simpsons. And Hermione is the smartest character in the Harry Potter books. Well, I kind of agree, but that is an opinion. Now this one, Daniel Rad Radcliffe once guest starred on The Simpsons. That sounds like a fact, but this is a definitely a, an opinion and Fred and George are much funnier than Percy is somebody's opinion. So let's pick C. All right, number five. What role do facts play in the formation of opinions? What role do facts play in the formation of opinions? Is it A, without facts you can't have an opinion? Or is it B, facts are backed up by informed opinions? Or is it C, informed opinions are backed up by facts? Or is it D, facts and opinions have nothing to do with one another? <clears throat> well, informed opinions are based, are backed by facts. Which of the following is an informed opinion? A. Many sharks give birth to live young. B, sharks' strong jaws and sharp senses make them fearsome predators. C, shark documentaries are the most informative programs on television. 
or is it D? The whale shark is the largest fish in the ocean. That sounds like a fact. So which one is an informed opinion? Hmm. I'm going to lean on this one. Shark strong jaws and sharp senses make them fearsome predators. Seven. In support of a young politician, one blogger writes that she's youthful. What word might another blogger use to call attention to her age in a negative way? Would we call her old? Would we call her immature? Would we call her young or energetic? So I'm going to say that they may say that she's immature, which would kind of be a cut down or a negative, right? Okay, so eight, who is likely to offer the most informed opinion about the history of the Eiffel Tower? So who is likely to offer the most informed opinion about the history of the Eiffel Tower? Would it be the president of France? Maybe. A construction worker who helped build the towers? Possibly. A tourist who just visited Paris? Hmm, maybe. A professor of French architecture? Hmm, I kind of think it's that one and I'm gonna tell you why because it's an informed opinion, and this is a professor of the architecture of the Eiffel Tower. So I'm gonna pick that one, it makes more sense to me. Cool. All right, so number nine, if you were a news editor, how may, might you slant coverage against a war your country is fighting? So if you were a news editor, how might you slant coverage against a war your country is fighting? Would you, A, by reporting mostly on defeats and ignoring successes? Or B, by interviewing top generals? Or C, by reporting on what life is like for the soldiers? Or D, by reporting the number of people injured in a battle? Well, if I was reporting, I believe that I would read be reporting the defeats and ignoring successes on the other side. <laughs> okay, and we have one more. Which word indicates that a statement is probably an opinion? Choose the best answer. Which statement is probably an opinion? Do you remember what Tim said? In the words, uh, is it A, might, or B, never, or C, opposite? or D, agreed. So never, never is going to be usually a, an opinion. Okay. Okay, so now comes for the assignment. Here it is. So you're going to write down you're going to do the category, categorize it, identify and write, okay? So let's see. I can. All right. So let's go over the instructions. And then I, I believe I can get all of it into the screen so that you can see the whole thing without me um, having to ask staff to stop it twice. So categorize the following statements as facts or opinions. Write an F next to the statement that is a fact and an O next to the statements that are opinions. So go ahead and write down the question or the sentence. And then on the left side of it, put, put F or O next to it for fact or opinion. So let's read them together. The first Hunger Games book was more interesting than the other two. The second one is trick or treating is a popular activity on Halloween. The third one, Eli Manning has the best arm in the National Football League. And the next one is most pioneers on the Oregon Trail reached the West safely. And the last one is according to the poll results, Thomas Jefferson 
is the most influential founding father. So you're gonna go ahead and write those sentences and next to each sentence, you're gonna write an F for fact or an O for opinion. And then let's read the next uh, instructions. Identify and rewrite. Identify whether each sentence has a negative or positive slant. Then write the, rewrite the sentence so it has the opposite. So every Saturday, Michelle drags her mutt to the park. So you're going to identify whether each sentence is negative or positive, and then you're going to rewrite it to the opposite. So um, The next one is Steve is a laid back guy and usually handles tough situations well. So how would you make that a negative? So rewrite that in a negative because he maybe he doesn't handle things so well. Um, the last one at the is that the last one in the bottom? Yes. So the last one in the bottom says allied forces liberated another town taking hundreds of enemy soldiers prisoner. So how can you turn that into a positive or a negative? However you're looking at that sentence. So that's the end of the lesson. Have staff pause the screen, fill out the worksheet just like it shows on the screen and turn it in for grading.